um, how participants can get um, a certificate of attendance for this, please? Yes, thank you. So if you, um, making sure I'm recording, if you need a certificate of attendance, we are not able to provide CRCs for this webinar, but we can provide a certificate of attendance that will indicate that you participated. You um, can email us at intactmail dot umcc dot edu and we'll put that in the chat and we'll put that in the um, q a as well and you'll be able to we will send you a certificate that you can share with uh, your employer or whoever may need evidence of your participation so that's something that we can do um, following the webinar so again, welcome. This is clearly a topic of interest. Um, we recognize, again, we are funded, we're the National Technical Assistance Center. We're funded by the Office of Special Education Programs and the Rehabilitation Services, Rehabilitative Ser Services Administration with the U.S. Department of Education. And we work with all states and territories on issues around secondary transition. In the current environment in which we are in, uh, many of us are interested in how can we continue to provide quality educational opportunities, quality services while many students are at home over the next several weeks? And so um, we thought this might be of interest to provide some resources around that. And apparently it is of interest. Um, we had well over 5,000 people register for this webinar. It looks like we have well over 3,000 on. If any, if you learn of colleagues or family members or others who were not able to be on today, again, there are these numerous ways that you can gather the information after the fact through the recording. We are airing currently through Facebook, um, through our web, our, excuse me, our Facebook page, which is Transition TA. So you can access the information lots of different ways if you're not, if someone is not able to be on with us right, right. now. We, and Catherine, yes. Catherine, I've been notified that we have been tapped out of the number of participants. And so <clears throat> if some of your colleagues cannot get on, um, please direct them to Facebook um, through transitionta.org or at transitionta. Right. Yeah. So we, um, there is a capacity that we can, can manage within the, the webinar. And I knew that, um, I know we've sent out a few messages about that. So we seem to have reached that maximum. And um, and so as Deanne said, they can, you can view it live on Facebook if they have access to Facebook. If not, again, this is being recorded and it will be aired after the fact and lots of resources will be posted as well. So um, I just post, this is Dana, I just posted the link where that information will be held. I know people have a lot of questions about where the email is and how to get this and how to get that. If you just go to that website that I just posted, you can find all the resources after this. Great. Thanks, Dana. Um, so we, again, we know that folks are in a little bit of a, a struggle or a challenge or a, a change, at least, with where students are being um, served right now, or at least where students are located. And so we hope that today you'll feel that you leave this webinar with at least a few um, solutions or, or a plan of action with for working with your own child or being with your own child at home or providing resources to family members who are at home with their with their children and directly to your students. I know we have some students on the webinar today as well. So we hope that that's what you will leave with. Again, you'll get an evaluation link after the fact and we hope that you'll give us feedback. What today's webinar is not is not going to be a session related to the legal policy sorts of guidance. There are numerous resources that are coming out from the US Department of Education on that. We've posted a lot of those resources. They've, Michael and Jackie have provided some links right here that are very useful, but we're not gonna get into those issues today. Really today is to focus on exactly what this slide indicates, sharing resources with families and professionals to support this period of time for transition age students while they are at home and have less access to, to the community. So with that, a couple other resources for you to be able to reference. There have been some excellent webinars already uh, in the field. These were, I believe last week, um, CEC had a great webinar on teaching online they're available at these links. So we don't want you to leave our webinar right now, but these are some other resources that are out there that may be useful to you. So please take a look at these um, after the fact. And this is just a kind of thinking about where you are and the relevance of the information today. 
this was a, a nice visual that was provided through case and we appreciated that in CEC. The many of your schools right now are sort of in that red area. They're either closed or there may be some homework packets and things going on. It appears that over the next several weeks, many schools may be moving into that yellow and, and light green area. And we think that the resources that Michael and Jackie will walk through today can be helpful to you in any of those situations. So we want to be sure to share not only some online resources that may be helpful to you, but also some things that can be printed and shared with families and students who may or may not be able to be online. So we want to make sure that, again, you leave with those resources. We also know that you are inundated with information right now online. And so the really one of the purposes of today is to help discern some of that information and sort of have it in one place. And again, very focused on this population of middle school and high school and, and transition age students and some of their needs. So with that, I'm going to, um, we're glad you're here. I'm gonna help Deanne manage the questions and turn it over to Michael and Jackie. Thank you very much. Thank you, Catherine. And we're gonna actually turn our cameras off too in a minute um, because we know that bandwidth and we are now at 3,050 people. Uh, but again, I'm Michael Storr uh, and I work for NTAC and, and Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie Hyatt and I also work with NTAC. So with that, I'm actually going to go off camera and talk to you a little bit about the agenda and share some resources that we have today. So as Catherine was mentioning, um, we do have all of the resources and they are on the NTAC website. Um, just real quickly, um, some of the things that you can find. We have a really nice handout on uh, resources um, that are available as you're working with your students and your youth at home. Um, so um, that is there, and if you go down there, there are um, a number of um, sections based on the post-school outcome areas, um, and then they are hyperlinked. Um, also, um, we have, um, posted for you two additional um, documents. Um, one is a, a choice board that Jackie's going to be talking about to use with your youth and students to talk about um, choices, options they can make, again, based on those three post-school outcome areas of further training, employment, and independent living. And then we also have an example um, that we gave you on how to plan the week. Um, for uh, young folks as they're sitting at home before um, a lot of online learning perhaps gets started. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then lastly, uh, we do have posted for you the PowerPoint um, in a uh, handout form. Um, and those are all available and on the NTAC website. Um, so you can find them there and actually on the Transition Coalition website. So for today, we're going to go and do a really brief overview of secondary transition because we know there are some family members that have joined us as well as some agency staff. Um, so we, we uh, realize there's a lot of professionals and um, you're well versed in what secondary transition is, but we felt it was important to do a, just a bit of a foundation. Um, then we're going to take some time and talk about using the information that you already know about your students, both in their measurable annual goals as well as their post-secondary goals, and how to utilize those as we're organizing online learning. And then the bulk of today is going to be spent talking about resources and activities um, that you can utilize, both high-tech and low-tech. We try to make sure that what we're suggesting are all free, accessible um, resources for you. So we're going to be looking at um, the areas of career interest and assessment, post-secondary education and training, employment, independent living, and then we have wrapping up with some final considerations of some sites that are looked at um, that were developed disability specifically. Um, we wanted to just mention, too, um, that I think it's important in not only the families changing roles, but really the professionals changing roles in this climate that we're in um, with COVID-19. Um, and really things, it has rocked our world. I, I, I know um, it seems like 24-7 it's on the news. Um, I live in Pennsylvania and we're at, in the Pittsburgh area and we're actually sheltering in place. Um, so I think it's, it's ever-changing, evolving 
um, issues that we're engaging with in our country that truly are unprecedented. And we wanted to make sure that folks are um, kind of just taking a break and, and a bit of a breath as we're looking at how to best support our students that we work with, our youth, our sons, our daughters um, in our homes. Um, so the bulleted items there are really um, to kind of make sure that we're taking time for ourselves, uh, ourselves as professionals or ourselves as parents. Um, make sure that we're practicing healthy choices in what we're doing. And it's funny, I was at the grocery store, and it seems like people are into heavy carb loading right now. So, um, you know, keep in mind uh, healthy lifestyles and exercise and kind of get out there. And, and um, you know, we, uh, we have to practice social distancing. How can we be communicating and, and, and engaging with folks? Um, and then I think when we're working with our students to really look at how we can be realistic inappropriate in what we're doing, um, making sure that we're setting boundaries, um, and making sure that we're connecting with the things that bring us joy, uh, whether they were parents or professionals. There are a number of resources that have been posted online um, that are specific to families in how to best support themselves and their sons and daughters. Um, so we recommend checking out these sites, um, the Child Mind Institute, um, there are uh, a resource from the school psychologists on there as well as guidance counselors. So again, check those links out. There's some really good suggestions um, and tools and resources uh, for families and students. So we also wanted to um, just remind everybody that even though we're at a distance, um, physically, we also still have that ability to continue to collaborate, and today's webinar is a great example of that. But as you're um, planning and working with students, remember to um, continue to engage and involve your educators in um, what students are doing. I'm sh hopefully your school is already setting up ways that you can do that. School counselors in transition provide a wealth of opportunities. Um, information and should have some really good information for you as far as online resources too. And continue to connect with our career tech ed folks um, in career planning. Um, there's amazing things online now. Um, I will share some of those with you that really do focus on um, that connection and some is provided through our career tech ed partners. Um, speech language pathologists, OTs, and PTs all have a lot of information that can help us provide those experiences and activities that will be helpful for families and for our students in their homes and to continue with our other partners. Um, our, we, I noticed we have some of our vocational rehabilitation counselors on and we know that you've been working so much with the schools um, through our pre -ads programs, pre-employment transition services, and we hope that we can um, figure out ways that we can continue that partnership. It's a really valuable one. Next. So just taking a quick look um, at, the, at what IDEA um, says secondary transition is, and what we're really focusing on, continuing to focus on, is that it is a coordinated set of activities. And so providing you some resources for that, we're still looking at it being a results-oriented process, regardless of the environment that, that we're um, providing services in. And we will be working with um, different strategies to continue that movement from school to post-school activities across all of the different um, post-school environments that um, our children act, will access Maybe not now, but in the future once again. Um, so I went over most of these things. I think one of the things to really um, focus on right now is while we're coordinating things, providing those activities in a more virtual um, or hands-on kind of way at home, um, that we're still focusing on those areas for post-secondary outcomes. And continuing to promote that movement. Next. The coordinated effort, secondary transition really has or always relied on that coordination across our environments. 
within our school and those connections um, with our, our colleagues in the schools, with our agencies and support services. And finding out how we do that in this environment, we will continue to provide some resources for that, but continue to engage with folks. Um, they have resources for you as well. And then connecting with families, that coordination and um, partnering with our families will only strengthen through this. So um, that is, um, I would say, one of the potential benefits. Um, next. So families um, really looking across those different areas that you typically um, support your child in and continuing to do that work and just in a little different way but continuing those connections for developing life skills now, um, providing enriching experiences, and starting to really um, focus on some of those self-determination and self-advocacy skill development. Okay. And picking up on that, you know, really looking at with families, uh, and until I think more, um, you know, structure can get put in place with distance and online learning, while that young person is in their homes and families that are online really looking at what are those real life situations that are happening day to day in your home. You know, capitalizing on having the young person make choices, um, have them self direct their day, uh, figuring out, you know, um, we're gonna talk about a choice board, but looking at a menu of options and what does that day look like? Um, you know, parents now are filling up 24 hours a day with their sons and daughters. Um, and how can we make sure that learning continues? Um, also, um, you know, really looking at um, having that student engage, um, be active at home. Um, you know, look at reasonable levels of risk and, and living with consequences. So if the person, uh, if his son is, or daughter is making something and it doesn't turn out great, um, well, recognize that we might have to eat something that doesn't taste too good the first time it was cooked, but the next time it's made, hopefully it, 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 would, it would be good. So um, looking at, again, using those real moments at home. And along those lines, really looking at the day-to-day -day activities that are going on. Um, when you look at all the various um, things that are being posted both online and in print through the newspaper, on what to do while you are um, at home and really can't um, you know, uh, leave and, and practice social distancing. So looking at things that um, we're all doing in our homes, such as organizing and cleaning and cooking and um, ways to virtually communicate. Um, somebody had posed a question about you know, how to really look at career exploration. And Jackie and I were talking about this could be a prime time to you know, either virtually on the computer or um, on the phone, talk to folks um, that have different types of jobs that are friends of yours and, you know, interview those on what those jobs are. Um, but being creative, kind of thinking outside that box as we are engaging in these everyday activities and capitalize on those as we're looking at the students' measurable annual goals as well as their post-secondary goals. So taking a step back and actually looking at the student's IEP, um, what is written in those present ed levels as starting points? Um, you know, where is that student as far as what they're really good at, um, what they're working on, what their goals are for this year, both their measurable annual goals as well as their post-secondary goals, hey, and how I those would be adapted. Yes. It's Catherine, sorry. Um, we have a couple people who are, because our closed captioning service sort of glitched in Zoom, um, they would love it if you, when you're speaking, and then Jackie, when you're speaking, if you could turn your camera on, um, it would okay. help them be able to access the information a little better. You okay, can do great. that. Okay, so thank you. No worries. And again, apologies okay. to those of you that were expecting captioning and something went awry with that, so thank you. Yep, sorry, um, we're back, <laughs> so um, we can do that. Um, so anyhow, as I was saying, really looking at the student's current plan, their IEP, and then looking at, so what are those measurable annual goals? Um, how could we look at adapting those to actually be done at, in the home setting rather than the school setting? And we're gonna give a couple examples of that in a few minutes. Likewise, looking at the activities that are connected to the post-secondary goals. 
um, how can those be adapted? And again, we're going to look at some online um, resources, some virtual resources, as well as some um, hard copy resources that could help to do that for those uh, post-school outcome areas of employment, um, further education and training, and independent living. Oh, sorry. So this slide is just talking just a briefly about sort of the um, different, well, sorry, let me go back one. Sorry about that. Um, so really looking at, again, what are post-secondary goals, and we've mentioned this, it's really looking at those areas of um, further training, what that student is going to do once they leave school, employment, and then how they're going to live. Um, after school in the community. And all of that is based, if you look at the blue box, on transition assessment and utilizing appropriate assessments to help determine those. Um, and again, referencing back to the IEP and the present education levels, there should be good information of the assessment practices, um, what the student's interests and preferences are, as well as their skill and abilities that led to the development of those measurable annual goals and post-school goals. Just briefly, the difference between the two post-secondary goals are looking at what the student is projected to do or identifying after they leave high school. Um, and again, they're addressing for the training, employment, and independent living versus the annual goals, which are really looking at those areas of needs or skill deficits that that young person has and working on those. So again, what can we do now? And I think as students are sitting at home, really looking at some strategies and, and some um, skills that can be built upon um, for that young person. Um, so helping them to look at identifying their needs, um, working on decision making in the home, uh, making choices. And again, re whether the student has um, higher level skills or has more complex needs to engage that student in those choice making activities. Um, looking at enhancing or utilizing communication skills. Uh, one of the examples we gave, you know, look at emailing, look at telephone conversations, and how can we use those forms of communication in the home to build upon the measurable annual goals that the student has. Um, and then really looking at supporting and documenting the successes of what we're doing while that student is in uh, the home environment. So I think some takeaways here, again, ultimately uh, make sure that we are taking care of ourselves uh, and our families. It is difficult times that we're in. I think, you know, there, there's just kind of a high level of tension also. So just taking some time to breathe, um, to, to adjust, um, and then really think about what we are doing, um, both in our own families, but with our students and our sons and daughters as we're supporting them. Is it appropriate? And is it reasonable given uh, the time that we have in the environments that we're living in? And it's going to look very different um, from family to family. Just like our individualized education planning is very um, different based on the student's abilities and strengths, so are, I think, the adjustments that we're making at this time. It's also important, and it's highlighted here, to engage the youth in this process as much as possible in the decision making, um, and looking at what those activities are going to be and making choices and also encouraging as much independence with the young person at home as possible. The other thing, and I mentioned it a few minutes ago, keep track and document what we're doing, um, whether we're teachers or agency staff working with students remotely or we're families. What are we working on? Um, you know, document that. Document the successes. Document the struggles that are occurring. Keeping track of what we're doing. It's also important that we look at providing a routine. We're going to give some examples of some scheduling and, and some goal choices to be made. Um, but I think that's true for ourselves as well as the young folks that we are supporting. Jackie had mentioned this a few minutes ago. If possible, um, coordinate with the school staff. Um, you know, look at um, those staff members that support our students naturally, whether it's occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech language therapists, um, what are suggestions that they may have for supporting the students um, 
on the measurable goals that they already have in their IEPs. As we're looking at activities um, to provide in the home, you know, considering how those are going to be delivered, looking at creating flexible opportunities. Um, I think the other thing too is not you know, getting overly stressed that we're filling up 20 hours a day. You know, look at a schedule. How many hours would make sense over the course of the day if the student is um, not engaged in online learning and is working remotely from home or even once they start that online learning process? What makes the most sense? Um, taking into consideration um, where that student is at. Um, what their ability levels are, their age levels, their interest levels, where their reading levels are, um, what their level of independence is. Um, for some students, it may be fine to say, you know, go work on this website. We're going to give you some examples. For other students, it might be sitting one-on-one -on -one with them to guide them through that process and have discussions as they're going through an activity online. Um, look at shorter activities, maybe multiple shorter activities over the course of the day. Uh, making sure that we're providing prompts. And um, while we're having difficulty with our closed captioning today on this broadcast, but um, looking at those sites or those videos that do provide closed captioning. One of the sites that we're going to look at um, is a, a listing of already captioned videos that can be watched. Um, and then looking at any types of supports that might be needed, like hand over hand supports. So we're now going to move in and just look at you know, you have a background, the student had been working up until two weeks ago in school based on their IEP plan. Um, how can we then take some of that and adjust it to this new environment, this solely based at home environment that we are in? So one suggestion that we have, and this is one of the handouts, is an example of a possible daily schedule or a planner that could be worked on with that young person and their family. Um, and basically all we did was we, we looked at taking the IEP, looking at the various measurable annual goals that student has. So in this example, the student has a reading comprehension goal of summarizing and identifying supporting details, a proofreading goal, um, a goal to work on time management and task completion, as well as a budgeting and understanding finances. Those are measurable goals. This particular student has post-secondary goals of going on for further training in the auto body field, getting a job in a competitive integrated employment setting in auto body, and living independently in the apartment in an apartment. So keeping those goals in mind, we then looked at all the different activities we have and we made some suggestions. So maybe starting the day with a combination of um, some things that they could be doing online, um, a number of fitness centers like Planet Fitness offer recorded daily routines now, so student engaging in that. Um, and then having the student read the online newspaper on what's the current situation of COVID-19, and then having that discussion with their parents, um, you know, going through and summarizing those details. Um, then looking at, um, you know, the rest of the day and how could that be filled in. So possibly look at writing an email to their grandparents parent um, before they send it, have mom or, or, you know, an older brother or somebody look at it. You know, they're using strategies that they learned on proofreading before that gets sent out. Um, and then in the evening, um, looking at one of the other activities that we suggest, um, a, a budgeting activity um, going on and working through that web, web page. The idea here is that looking at options using some things that are, we're providing to you as well as things that are naturally occurring um, in, in folks' homes right now. And with that, Jackie, I'm going to turn it to okay. you. Okay. Great. Thanks, Michael. Am Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, there we okay. go. Okay. Great. So one of the um, ideas that um, I ran across um, was the concept of choice boards. And many of you may use these in your classrooms. But I think they um, can really support that at homework as well. Um, and it's something that you might be able to um, set up and it could be um, a week of activities and, or um, a couple of weeks, however you decide to set it up. But um, it's a way to um, allow the student and the family to 
make some choices about time and about activities that are happening in the home while still accomplishing things that are very relevant um, to completing their transition plan or developing their transition plan. So you've been provided one um, for each area of post-secondary goal setting, um, the career exploration um, board, there's education and training and independent living. And uh, we just went through and put in some activities that may be typical um, and tried to mix it up a bit to give some both um, some online versions as well as um, some paper pencil things that you could print off for packets and, and just and some activity based things where the student might be using things around the house. Um, the home learning schedule is just a way, another visual way, it's just an example. Um, Teachers Pay Teachers is a great website to look for resources and this is something that um, I found on that. Um, so putting together a more visual schedule for um, students that may need that type of um, support. Hey, and Jackie, I'm looking at some of the comments. Folks are saying they have other examples of both um, boards as well as scheduling. Huh? And we would love for folks to share that. So just as a reminder again on the Transition Coalition website, there is a discussion blog and we do encourage folks to go on there and share. That's great. Yes, we really want to encourage that because I feel like we're creating this new community that um, we've always shared transition um, providers. Um, I think that's one of our, our great things is that we do collaborate and we share with each other. Um, so let's go on and um, take a look at some of those resources. Um, that we've divided them up into those three categories, although we do have a slide first that talks about some very large websites that have many resources. But we did want to share as we were going through, we found it was, you know, just like the fire hose was on with all kinds of information. But um, this first one I wanted just to point out quickly is the amazing educational resources. Some of you may have discovered that already. It started um, I believe from South Korea when they began um, having to teach more virtually and, and shelter in place. And um, it's just, it's huge. So you could probably find just about anything you need there. Um, Scholastic and TED Ed, some of you may have used those. Those are links to explore those places too. Okay, next. Um, a bit on assessment. Um, just remember that as that everything we do as transition um, specialists and working with students, everything we do on a daily basis is information that provides um, guidance on how we're going to develop goals um, across the, the three um, groups, employment, post-secondary education and training, and independent living. So just some um, places that you can go to find um, and gather that information. So you want to the next one? So on the, um, we just put together, this is remembering that as we're um, developing transition plans, as we're providing activities that we really are focused on the student taking a lead role in this whole process. These are just some questions around assessment that are focused from that vantage point. So helping the student um, find their unique strengths, talents, and interests. Um, and what did they want to identify and what they want to do now and in the future. So just really focusing on um, helping the student to uncover those strengths, talents, and interests. And so we're going to share with you a couple of um, things. Again, just a reminder, we're looking at these three areas. I like to call them the three bucket areas, employment, education, training, and independent living. So there are um, a number of places to find assessments, but I wanted to highlight, um, Jackie and I were talking, and um, she actually had uh, come from this uh, recently, uh, the transition assessment matrix uh, that is from Indiana. And we actually did just want to take a minute to show folks this site because it really is, um, it, it's a great resource if you haven't seen it. Um, so again, it's from the Indiana University in Bloomington. Um, and 
real quickly, just to scroll down, what's really kind of cool about this matrix, um, it has a feature where you can go in and select the criteria for different types of assessments uh, related to secondary transition. So if I click here, uh, employment, and I click a grade level area, and then I go down and click one or more disability categories, and I'll just click a couple here, what you'll see that comes up are various types of assessment tools that can be utilized. So it's really cool. And the really nice thing is when you click on them, the actual PDF of the documents are there. Uh, and I'm sorry, I need to take my camera on again. Sorry about that. Um, so for this example, if someone is involved in a volunteer experience, this is a nice way of tracking that. Um, so we really did. We, we thought that this particular site was really, really helpful. Um, it, it really is a dynamic way of looking at different types of assessments for students under those domain areas based on grade levels as well as disability areas. Um, so really wanted to highlight that. Um, and also, just as a reminder, and, and it, it is a little bit in need of updating, but the transition toolkit that NTAC has, um, there are wonderful resources and strategies that are listed in there as well. Okay, and a lot of, on that matrix that Michael was showing you, um, many of the things that are in there can be used as part of the activity or to gather information from an activity. So it's not even though, you know, we talked about it as being a part of assessment. It really is a handy tool to pull off all kinds of things. These are three examples of things that I discovered when I went on the matrix. Uh, careers cluster interest survey, and that's actually um, a PDF that goes through and walks um, a student through answering some, responding to some statements to identify some career interest areas. Uh, job shadow feedback is similar to the one Michael showed you. Um, it just got some, you may have to flex being given that our environment's a little different, but you can do that. Um, so- I'm sorry, give me one sec. <laughs> and then the photo career quiz. That would be, it's, it's really a nice way, again, to identify those interest areas for students, but it uses photos and it, it then takes that information that students respond to and highlights a few areas that seem to be of interest to them. Okay, let's, um, independent living, um, we've put together um, a couple of places. Um, you can see the one checklist is also a Spanish version. And then many of you probably are familiar with or may already be using the Casey Life Skills, but that's a really nice website. Some students will be able to do that independently and others will need some support to walk through it. But it, um, it gives really nice information and ideas about um, life skills kids need to develop. And the Independent Living Checklist is actually off of the Parent Hub, so it really is a nice family-friendly tool to use. So looking at the area of post-secondary um, education and training, this is just a list of the options we typically will be looking at, the environment students will be moving to, and um, there may be some they access during high school so that they are participating in um, career tech ed or um, some other credit options under dual enrollment. So let's take a look at a couple of things we have in here for you. Um, off to College is one I discovered um, recently through one of our other resources, our, um, the Intact Post-Secondary Education and Training Preparation Toolkit um, that I have a slide on here about. But this is really a nice, um, it, it includes a lot of things on planning, it has a college search engine in it, um, financial aid um, across a variety, many um, types of financial aid you can explore. And then there's a section about life on campus. So in our virtual world, we can still learn. Think College, um, this is a great website, very rich with all kinds of information for professionals and families. Um, it's really focused on um, those inclusive post-secondary options for students with intellectual disabilities, but it has a nice um, national college search um, section on there so you can learn uh, what's going on in your state or nearby. 
or if you want to go across the country at some point. But there's really good tools for all the planning and exploring um, about that as an option for um, a student. Next. And this is just the um, web or the document I mentioned that is recent on the intact um, website. And you can find that at transitionta.org. Um, we have many resources on there too to explore, but this was one, a unique one I wanted to share. Um, Michael and Jackie, I was just going to let you know, apparently our closed captioning is now working well. So if it works better for you all from a, a bandwidth perspective, okay. I think we are okay now. Thank you. Okay, great. Let's take a look at um, some employment resources that are focused on that area. I wanted to share with you um, this continuum of career exploration and experiences. Um, as you're thinking about developing and providing those activities for students, we want to uh, continue to work to um, build that awareness, to have students explore careers, to um, do as much preparation um, as possible, and then with the idea that the student will be employed and out in the community working. So this helps to break it up to as you're looking for um, different activities across those. Next slide. I discovered this and it is an amazing website, I have to say. Even though it says Ag Explorer on it, it has all kinds of careers um, about marketing and um, design and science and so um, don't be afraid that it just says Ag Explorer because you'll there's a career finder section in here where students can um, do some more interest exploring. What's really nice are the virtual field trips. So there's field trips through many different businesses and they um, provide information about how the work takes place and the different kinds of careers that are in um, like the John Deere um, tractor factory. There's um, some retail stores that include marketing. So it's a really ni nice partnership with Discovery Education and um, there's teacher resources that go along with that as well too. And I know there's other um, virtual field trips out there, um, but this one was one I wanted to share with you that I discovered. Next. Well, and a question did come in, and these are free resources that we're sharing. Um, everything that we've talked about, we, we kind of made a point of that. So if folks are wondering, um, as you go through, they are. Now, some things, um, they are free right now because of COVID-19. There may be a cost after this crisis is over. Um, Michael, just real quick while you guys are paused, there was, I think, Jackie, you mentioned a specific resource from SIPR a minute ago. Did you share something about from the Parent Center Hub? Yeah, it was the oh, parent, yes. back real quickly, it was the assessment. Um, hang on, sorry. Um, just give me one second. There was just it, a couple of questions on that and I... Yeah, it was the, um, well, maybe, sorry. Yeah, you're getting there. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> didn't really mean to take you that far back. <laughs> Independently. Sorry, okay, this sorry. was actually from the Parent Hub, and it was one of the um, documents that the parent centers wanted to make sure that we put out there also. Okay. Um, and it, it really is a pretty simple um, pen and paper kind of document, but it's nice because it allows somebody to kind of look at, okay, you have your son or daughter sitting at home, what can they do, what do they need help doing? Um, so anyhow, that, that was the reason. Thank you. And I know we just have a few minutes, so I didn't mean to take you back. I will um, just let everyone know there are excellent resources being shared in the chat and the Q&A, and we are going to clean up those two sources, and that will be yet another resource that we will post. So that question has come in quite a few times. I just wanted to say that. Um, the, the Explore work, um, can be found at explorework.com. This is a set of modules that our partners um, at WinTech um, put together, um, another technical assistance center supporting um, career development on the rehabilitation side. Um, and so you've got the links to that and you can go through that. They're really excellent. They're set up with teacher resources 
and um, easy to use um, modules. Yeah. And they are based on the pre-employment um, transition, so pre-ETS. Um, so mm -hmm. each of those cover the five areas for pre-ETS. Mm -hmm. So a nice partnership with your rehab counselor as well too, potentially. Okay, next. Um, I was really wanting to find some ways that students could um, have experiences through um, other than online on their computer. Um, there are, I know, a lot of mobile apps for cell phones out there. Um, and this was one that I think um, the Career One Stops, many of us have used the website. The mobile app really is quite comprehensive and has the same thing. So it has videos, um, as assessments. It's really comprehensive. Students can do a lot of good exploring um, and still keep on track with um, the activities that you, you're assigning them. And just to mention too, and this isn't on the PowerPoint, but in the handout guide that we mentioned earlier that's posted on the NTAC website, the PACER Center had put together a guide called the Path to Independence which is a guide of mobile apps to support transition age youth. Uh, now it's a couple years old, um, but they do offer a, a ton of resources as far as apps are concerned, and they're both in Android and um, iPhone usage. So just wanted to give a little plug to that. If you haven't seen it, check out our resource guide. Okay, just some additional websites and resources around um, the employment component of um, planning and activities. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Michael. Okay, thank you. Um, so we're going to move into the next area, which is independent living, and we want to provide a couple of resources around independent living. Um, so when we're thinking about independent living, and this actually goes back to the, one of those very early slides in the, today's webinar, we were, were talking about things that you're doing at home, things that families are doing at home right now. Um, it really does cover these, um, and you kind of have students and youth are now a captive audience in their homes. Um, so really looking at working on home maintenance types of skills or personal care skills, cooking skills, cleaning skills, um, budgeting, finances, um, looking at recreation and leisure activities that are possibly being able to be done in the home or, or directly outside that don't involve necessarily that um, direct inter interaction that is able to keep uh, social distancing. So some of the suggestions that we have, um, the Center for Health Transition, the GOT Transition materials and their website are excellent. Um, they've been updated. Um, I know we've used those when I was working in Pennsylvania. Um, we, we referenced a lot of those in the healthcare transition checklist we developed, uh, but they're really great materials and they're not necessarily just regarding healthcare. Um, you know, they, they are looking at activities, um, looking at what that student can do, um, life skill areas, functional skill areas. Um, so again, if you have never checked out Got Transition and their resources, we highly recommend looking at those. We also, uh, when we were trying to kind of define this section, because there are so many things around independent living you could address, um, we did want to mention budgeting, uh, because we really felt that that was something that could be done at home, could be talked about at home. So be it looking at some type of home system for doing chores around a house, but then also some guides that are available. So um, this is actually also from Pennsylvania, um, a guide that was put together called Sense and Sensibility. Um, and this is actually for students that um, have intellectual developmental disabilities, but it could be used by anybody, but it's really looking at um, financing and money and, and money management. And then um, this is a link to a site called Budget Your Life. Um, and it is actually a site that um, it's on a number of states' um, career zone sites, um, but it's a way of looking at um, how much things cost in life, and they compare that to jobs and what type of job you would have to have in order to um, earn that much money to have the million-dollar home and the Ferrari. Uh, just, just a joke there. 
Um, the other thing that we wanted to include were some examples of recreation and leisure options that are out there. If you haven't seen the Google Arts and Culture site, it's pretty amazing. I, I'll be honest, I had never seen um, that site. And it basically takes you around the world to museums and historical places, um, and, and you can virtually explore them. Um, and then we've given you some um, exercise fitness things regarding exercising as well as yoga options. And these right now, all these things that are listed here are free. The last thing that we wanted to mention in our additional considerations were a number of sites that were put together that are disability resource specific. Um, so based on disability areas such as autism, intellectual and developmental disabilities, mental health and sensory impairment, these are resources that are specific to COVID-19 and things that could be done at home um, and discussions that can be had with individuals that have these diagnosis. And real quickly, just wanted to show you the one um, that was developed for sensory impairments. Um, hold on one second. Um, and it's actually a dashboard um, that was put together. And this is actually from um, Texas. It's a, it, I'm sorry, it's a live binder. And as you can see, there are a number of links. And when you click on these, so for example, for students that are um, deaf blind, um, it then comes down and, and it has a number of resources um, for those students that are complex learners and particular things that can be done at home. So we wanted to point that out to you because we felt that these resources were really good. Um, the, we've had a number of questions that came in regarding students with intellectual or developmental disabilities. There are some nice resources on the ARCS website, including a really nice um, kind of a, a um, one-page graphic organizer about what is um, COVID-19. So we wanted to point those out to you. And with that, I think, Deanna, it's over to you. Great, thank you um, very much. Um, we will take a few minutes to answer your many, many questions. As, and as Catherine had shared, um, we will um, go through all those amazing resources that everybody's been sharing. And please, if you have other resources that we haven't shared or you haven't seen streaming through the, um, chat box, um, please add them there and we'll make them available for that. Um, so we have um, a couple of questions um, that I would like to um, throw to Michael and Jackie. There is one specifically for um, individuals that may not have access to um, internet. Are there um, resources available um, and how can we use those? There are, and I'll let Jackie jump in too, um, a lot of the sites that we talked about do have um, items that can be um, downloaded. I mean, you'd have to get those out to folks. But I think the other thing too is, um, you know, really to talk with the families about things that could be done in the home um, with their sons or daughters um, and kind of base those upon um, goals that they would normally be working on. And Jackie, I don't know if you have other suggestions. Yeah, I was just in the, um the choice boards, um, I've included um, some things that can be downloaded and co made copies of so that you could include that way. So I tried to mix it up a little bit. I think phone apps is going to be another good way if students have phones. Um, some of the, um, like I know AT&T is, is lifting their cap on data. So um, th I think there's some options that will emerge too. Okay, great. And there's another question specific for um, students that may have um, more significant support needs. Any um, specific resources for those? Yeah, there were some that were listed, and I know one of the things when we were talking about scheduling and choice boards, there's some really nice examples um, that are on, online of uh, what those kind of those picture boards could look like. Um, I think, too, it, it because somebody had, had mentioned, I saw in the chat, about um, students with more significant needs needing more, more support at home. And I think that is true, and that is something to keep in mind. Um, but to, um, you know, space out those activities over the course of the day to make sure that there are those supports um, to help those students out. Yeah. Uh, 
And I, I would just say that I think that um, as we move forward to that's an area that uh, Michael and I have talked about putting more resources together on. So if you have some that you're using, um, please share them with us and we'll look through them. That'd be awesome. Right. And one more resource that I'd like to share um, is that the Council for Exceptional Children is free um, through um, May 31st and maybe um, longer. So this is an, act, an excellent resource for all age groups for students with disabilities. So you can click on that link um, to join now. And then also the division under the Council for Exceptional Children, the Division for Career Development and Transition, you can um, find resources specifically um, for that, um, for our age group that we're talking about today. Can you go on to the next slide, please? Also, another way for you to stay in touch with this, there's uh, multiple ways we're going to share today, but if you would like to receive a weekly newsletter from Intact, um, that we will be sharing even more um, resources that are um, much like today's, you can go to our um, website at transitionta.org, scroll to the very bottom where it says stay in touch, and you can fill out a brief form um, with your information and you'll get a weekly news blast every week that provides resources not only from Intact but other um, technical assistance centers um, and other national events that are pertinent to um, transition age youth and providing services for that. So even after this crisis is over, this um, would be a great resource um, to get your um, weekly updates um, for other resources for your students. Um, next slide. Now, as to questions, I thought the next slide was actually going to be this. Oh, there it is. Um, is that if you want to continue this conversation um, for and um, sharing of resources, getting more resources, this um, we will have um, availability at the on the transition coalition. So that um, link at the top of what your screen is at right now, um, which you can download from the um, PDF of the PowerPoint, um, please click on that link and you'll be able to participate in an ongoing chat, um, able to share resources, get resources from other individuals like yourself, students um, serving um, transition age youth. Oh. So I'd like to, this is Dana, um, I'd like to just say that um, our site is really a little overwhelmed right now. So if you get to it and it says can't access the database, it's because there's like more than 3,000 people trying to access that at the same time. So just give it a few minutes and go back to it. So I just wanted to say it's not down, it's just can't quite take that much traffic. <laughs> Right. And um, I also want to encourage everyone to complete the evaluation um, for this webinar. The link is provided on our PowerPoint. You'll also receive an email um, tomorrow for it. Um, it'll provide us um, intact more information if um, more webinars like this in the near future are useful to you all. Um, and then also ensure that we are targeting what your needs are. So please share um, with us what you need and how effective this um, um, transition uh, this um, transition focused webinar was um, we are really um, our project officers have really shared that they want us to pivot to your needs to ensure that our students with disabilities are being served during this time period I can also want that link in the pan in the chat please so people can go to it right now yes um, it is all has been in the chat a couple of times I will I think it I can still do it right now there we go. Um, and so then also um, there is a link. Um, we've made an actual landing page for resources um, during this COVID-19 outbreak that um, are available on um, NTAC's website, which you can locate at transitionta.org slash COVID-19. Um, for those that are all phone in listeners, that's transitionta.org slash COVID-19. So with that, I will really want to thank everyone for their participation. And we know that there were a lot of questions that we were not able to get to, but by participating in the Transition Coalition um, Ask the Expert um, link, you'll be able to connect with other individuals like you, see more resources and um, We'll move on from there. And we will also clean up the, all the resources that you all provided and um, 
put them on the link. A, a copy of this recording will be um, uploaded to our website as soon as possible um, with a closed caption version. Um, so hang in there, everyone. Um, we're doing all that we can. And so really take care of yourself. Anything else for the greater good in tech staff? I think we're good. Thank you all for joining us today. And uh, hopefully this was helpful to y'all. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.